You're listening to 91 Reasons, a journey into the twisted landscape of pop culture. Keep your hands and arms inside the podcast at all times. And now, The Voice, Jeff Tucker. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. 91 Reasons is here. I am Jeff Tucker. I am The Voice. I am joined today by my co-host, Rachel Tucker. Hello, everyone. And we are here to talk about a couple of events that we went to over the weekend. We had a pretty good time. It was really weird because those of you that know me personally know that usually I work every night of Not Scary Farm and my, my schedule is ironclad. There's no getting out of it. This year I had a lot of free time, so Rachel and I were able to actually do something other than just Scary Farm. Normally you go to Scary Farm like eight, nine, ten times, right? More. Like about at least 13. And how many times did you go this year? You want to say about four? That's, I, that, yeah. Although with the pass, I mean, that still comes out to about $20 a it, trip, yeah. so... But we had time to do all those Back to the Future events, all those day-long things that I did. And what's really cool is that with the books that I've written about magic and the amazing people that I have met at um, Not Scary Farm and, and conventions, we're always, we're always finding ourselves at amazing places and events. And last week was no different when... Someone that I know really well from work, uh, who I met. Uh, sh- should we mention her name or do we not mention her name? Doesn't matter. Yeah, well, we'll just say E. We'll call her E. Thanks to E and E's amazing connections to the people that she knows, we were able to attend uh, Halloween Extravaganza Sleepy Hollow at the world famous Magic Castle in Hollywood. Yay! And let me tell you, if you've never been to the Magic Castle, you are you are missing out. It is arguably one of the top five coolest places on earth. Um, I mean, I, I, agree. I, I wrote an entire book based on the Magic Castle. When I was growing up in Norwalk, three houses down lived a professional magician who was a member of the Magic Castle and kept telling me that someday he was going to take me and that never happened. Um, I actually got to go to the Magic Castle for the first time because of my friendship with the amazing magician Ed Alonzo. I was going to mention him right now because I didn't grow up into magic the way you did. And I was going to say, I think the first time I ever even watched or knew of magic tricks or magician was Saved by the Bell, which would be Max. But now, of course, I were lucky enough to call as a, as a friend at Alonzo, who I love dearly. And yes, he needs to come back to the Magic Castle. Yeah, he normally does a December run. Christmas. So yeah, let's well, hope. Maybe. But um, I'd always dreamed of going to the Magic Castle. And it was always told to me, like, from magicians, it's the greatest place ever. you got to go. you got to go. So when I finally got to go, other things in life, it actually lives up to the hype. Uh, it's actually cooler than y- you can can be described. The way people described it to me was not as cool as actually going to the it's Magic actually Castle. Actually, very magical. Oh boy! It is like when you walk through those doors. I forget that I have kids at home that need to be checked on and things that I don't do when I go out with friends to like a restaurant or a party. But there's just something about the Magic Castle. I'm like, they're fine. Kids who? Yeah. Well, we're not leaving. Yeah, that's what I'm we're saying. We're not leaving. I mean, that's magic that, that happens to me there. When I was a kid, I was a magician. Uh, I did probably 20 or 30 shows as Tucker the Magnificent in my yellow cape that my mom made for me and my suitcase full of illusions. So magic has always been uh, something I've always really been interested in. It's just It's just cool. You find out that like Steve Martin was a magician and a lot of celebrities are very into magic and <clears throat> it just... It's just a cool way of of seeing the world. And it's not about fooling people. It's about opening their minds to the idea that there is something more amazing than the world that we know. You know, just below the surface. And for really gullible people like me, it's unbelievable. Well, yeah. 
So we got to go. Now, we've been to the Magic Castle before, but we've never gone during Halloween week. And during Halloween week, they actually try to decorate the place, which is comical in itself. Because the Magic Castle is... The Munsters. It already has... It already has... A feeling and an emotion and uh, an aesthetic to it that is unlike, like it is like walking into either. But it's not overdone. It doesn't take away from the Magic Castle. No, it's just weird because it just adds a layer to it. So, in addition to this amazing Gothic mansion in the Hollywood Hills, they overlay the Sleepy Hollow. The there's a windmill and the headless horseman and trees and clouds, a, clouds that light up and look like it's about to rain inside. And they even add the um, the bridge where Ichabod Crane meets the uh, the headless horseman in the story. Like it's all very very cool, and it's just fun. And the, here's the other added bonus: is that the Magic Castle has a really strict dress code that cannot be messed with. If you show up there not meeting the dress code, they will either won't let you in, or you have to wear some of the worst. Coat and tie combinations well, we've had ever. that happen actually with our friend E. Yeah. Who showed up without a jacket once, and I had to take mine off because my dress underneath was fancy enough to be acceptable without the jacket. So they said mm -hmm. she can come in if she has your jacket. On. Isn't that funny? But we got to go in costume this year. So Rachel, what was your costume? I was Lydia Dietz in the red wedding gown. I tell you, honey, she meant nothing to me, nothing. I'm Lydia Dietz, and I'm of sound mind. Or, you asked, I'm answering. Yes, I love that. Man according to Bobby, a Spanish vampire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a Spanish vampire. Olé. Olé. I want to suck your blood <laughs> at Taco Bell. Uh, and I went as, of course, Willy Wonka. What else would I go as? <laughs> and I had a, a pocket full of candy in case anybody asked uh, if they wanted chocolate. So we got to go to the Magic Castle. We got to go and watch uh, our very good friend Ken Baker do Yay, Ken. some amazing illusions uh, way down in the deep catacombs of the Magic Castle itself. And we love the, the, the vibe, the ambiance. We um, had, a, had, a, had a, you had a cocktail, you had a beer, not a cocktail, you had a beer. And I had I, a beer. I had cranberry juice and we just walked Can around. I only had one? I only had one I beer. Think you only had one. You didn't want to get drunk. Those stairs are hard to go up and down. There's many layers to the Magic Castle. Yeah, it's... And if you're doing it in hills, good luck doing a drunk. It w twists and turns. And, and a dress that goes out and big and long. Yeah. You had to think of all these things. We didn't get a chance to sit down and hang out with Irma, the That was the, the only thing piano. I regretted because that's my favorite thing to do every time I go. Yeah, that's my favorite thing too. Yep. We, but, but the trade-off was Ken led us on a breakneck tour through the Magic Castle. With Alki. With his owl key. Yeah, yeah. I, thought you, I thought you were calling him an owl key. Like an owl key. An owl key. He had an owl key around o his neck. O W L key. That you would scan at different locations and bring to life magic tricks throughout the castle. Yeah, it was really cool. So it was interactive. Yes. Uh, and he also took us on a whirlwind tour of some of the most talented magicians uh, in the world because they all passed through the magic castle. And uh, we got the first one we got to see was a guy in the close-up gallery named Poor Richard who was in character in the time period of the Magic Castle. Was this the guy that kind of pushed out Ken to do his stuff? No. This is the oh, guy that was dressed he in... scared me. I'm like, we're not giving props to that guy. He was dressed in colonial garb and he did tricks with oh, coins. Oh, yeah, no, he was good. Yeah, see, I, let me lead. I'm not going to take you down any bad turns. I, I'm just, I just need to refresh my memory. Yeah, so we saw Poor Richard. He was good because he had... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. He had really good patter, which is what ma magicians speak for how they, what they tell you to set up the illusion before they do it. And his was good because he was all in period. Uh, he talked about Ichabod Crane and the Hessian, the Headless Horseman. And I thought it was pretty, pretty uh, interesting. And it was fun. And it, it really started the night off well. And uh, then we um, went all around to different, they have, they have multiple theaters in the place. And uh, we tried to catch as many as we could. We ended up back at the close-up gallery watching uh, a magician called Bijan, Bijan the Magician. Loved him. And you know what? Bijan was hysterical. I got to be his assistant. <clears throat> yeah, you were. You sat right up close and were his assistant for the uh, for the, the act. And uh, Bijan's thing is like, 
Imagine if David Copperfield and Borat had yes. a child. Oh my God, yes. So he's like, welcome, we're going to do some tricks for yes. you. It's going to be great. Be B- Sean. But everyone loved him. Oh, my God. The other guy hit on him the entire show. Yeah, he was great. And the, the signature thing that he did, I mean, first off, his sleight of hand was flawless. Was so quick and me. so good that... Um, so he tells Rachel, he's like, just relax, Rachel. You know what? I relax. Bijan, relax you. We'll make you some tea. So he gets like a cup of tea and he puts a tea bag in. Now it's all an act because we were told later this guy's name is David and he's totally American as you and me. So it's all a caricature. Like better is Bijan. So he puts a tea bag in and he sets it to steam and he has Rachel pick a card. He does all these illusions where he's going to find the card and he doesn't find the card. And finally, he pulls out the tea and he pulls out the tea bag and the tea bag is not a tea bag. It's a it's folded a card. up card and it's your card. Yes. It was it was really amazing. And the coin on my hand. That he did a amazing. trick with a, with a coin on your hand that was great too. And I got to keep it. A souvenir. As a, it was a poker chip. Yeah, with his picture. Yeah, Bijan. With his unibrow. The magician. So he was great. <laughs> if if you're looking for somebody to hire for your corporate event, uh, he would rock the house. Yeah. He's really that good. We ended up seeing him late in the night in one of the lower catacombs of the Magic Castle. <clears throat> he was wearing <coughs> Groucho Mark glasses yeah. with a wind up mustache that went up and down when he walked. It was really, he was very, very talented. We ended up at the parlor of, parlor of prestidigitation where we saw Misty Lee. And uh, Misty Lee was good, different. Okay, I loved her personality. I don't, I don't know if she was one of my favorites when it comes to the magic stuff. What's well, unusual to see a female magician there aren't yeah. a lot of them around. So uh, I thought she did very good. The way she presented the illusions, her patter was very good. Um, she um, created this persona of this, you know, this flirty, flirty busty, lusty yeah. magician who's looking to sin. And she does tricks about original sin. And I, I enjoyed it. it. Again, it wasn't my favorite of the night. It, it was a tough tough road after Bijan. Yeah. Um, but but she was she was good. And she also, because she went on late in the night, she also had to deal with a lot of drunks. Yep. And I'm not sure what happened at the Magic Castle because they're normally yeah, very like rigid we're about... Kicked out if you become that. And the people were belligerent. Uh-huh. One guy was just yelling for beer and like, relax, guy. We're, we're all just trying to watch a show here. You need to just relax. Uh, but she was good. But then the highlight of the night for me, and, and Bijan was great, but the highlight of the night was in the main large theater, the Palace of Mystery, uh, was the signature show of the night. Rob Zabrecki, and he was joined by an act called Conjure. And let me tell you, Conjure was good. And Conjure was very high energy. They danced. Fun. The girl stole the show. She was very Bernadette Peters-like. Mm -hmm. She was, like, you got exhausted watching them. They sweat the stage up. They danced. They He did an act with hats where he was juggling bowler hats that was astounding. I had never seen a hat act like that, and it was truly one of a kind, truly amazing. But for me, the highlight of the night was Rob Zabrecki. And Rob Zabrecki is very deadpan very dry. He comes off almost like a mortician. Yes. And he opened the show by saying, good evening and welcome everyone. It's the night before Halloween. I want to welcome and tell you that tonight is my 93 year old father's birthday. We'll all give him a round of applause, please. And then he brings out an urn of ashes Puts a little party hat on it and then throws confetti into the air. And you know what? Right there he had me. Oh my God, it was hysterical. He also had his father's prize possession, his membership card to the Angeline fan club, which I thought was great. If you don't know who Angeline is, she's a woman who in the 80s bought a billboard on Melrose of herself to promote her as a brand. Before social media, there was Angeline. So to bring her up in that manner was really funny. And you know what? The more that Rob Zabrecki did, the funnier he got. Every time he came out, 
he would just dare the audience to continue the high that the Conjure group had brought the audience to. Like, it was really, really amazing how great it was. I, I had a really good time. Now, we were in the back row. It was hard yeah. to see. People were wearing costumes. The Good Witch Glinda had to be told to remove her crown because the people behind her couldn't see. So with all that, that was the highlight of the night for me. Such a good time. Yes. We... Um, Ventured downstairs through Spider Hallway with a co beautifully Hollywood um, caliber cobwebs and spiders. The they, most beautiful spider webs ever. We're not talking about the kind that it's are not like, it's not cotton, not that yeah, cotton like you pull stretch, apart. Pull apart like these looked like real cotton. Well, like they were spun. They yeah, they're were spun gorgeous. from they're spun from a gun, and they're yeah. they're. I mean, the, the, I was saying that hallway must have taken somebody eight or nine hours because yeah, it was, it was so completely pretty. beautiful. Um, and then uh, we, we, we headed out because we had a big day the next day. But before we headed out, we took some pictures uh, where you can take pictures because you the can't take in pictures. The lobby in front of the, the mansion are the only you, two places. You know what they have that's really cool and not a lot of people know about it? Is that uh, in the men's bathroom, there's a payphone. And right next to the payphone is a machine that you put a quarter in. And it has sound effects that play. Airport. um auto body shop like zing zing vroom, vroom. so you can call your wife and tell her you you'll be late because you're at another place and not the magic castle i just think that's hilarious uh the castle is full of so many little tricks and illusions like that pepper's ghost here uh, we saw the original uh display model that sold walt disney on the idea of the haunted mansion uh the pepper's ghost effect in the ballroom just yeah, truly really amazing neat. And then um, before we left, we had a visit to the Candy Coffin. Yes. Which was a actual life-size coffin completely filled with candy. And you could take all you wanted. And, and like that's a test of, of your uh, willpower. And do I want to look like a pig? Because, <laughs> excuse me, there were... There were so many Kit Kats visible that I just wanted to keep going. One there, one there. Oh, a dark one, a regular one, a dark one, a Kit Kat. Oh, it was great. And uh, then we jetted out, and it was a lot of fun. We want to thank our good friend E and uh, the amazing uh, magician Ken Baker for hosting us Yay. that night. We met his lovely wife. We had a Joan, week. she's awesome. We had such a good time at the Magic Castle in full costume, like... It, like it's hard to describe out of a movie like a real like movie star Halloween well yeah it's like you know when you see when you see a, a Halloween scene in a movie and everybody's dressed yeah. up nobody sits I mean nobody sits on the sideline everybody steps up their game in a really good costume and that's what it was like because our costumes like I, I haven't done a Halloween since 1993. So I wanted to look. Hot widow. I didn't want to have something homemade. I wanted something that looked. I mean, not that homemade's bad, but I wanted something that was like I don't have to worry about it, and it just looked good. And we both had good costumes, and we saw some amazing costumes there. We saw Freddie Mercury hanging oh out God, with, with David, David Bowie. Bowie. Yeah, they were the best couple. It killed me that I couldn't take a picture of them because no photography. I almost seriously leaned into her and said, "If I give you your number, will you text me that picture of you guys on your phone?" I wanted it so bad. They were great. All of the servers were dressed as if they were in uh, Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow, Hollow Village. Like, it was really, it was a lot of fun. It was, here's the thing. It was immersive. And it's hard to go to a Halloween party that's immersive. Because you're usually just somebody's house and they hung up a skeleton or two. But the Magic Castle already has that vibe. And then the overlay of Halloween just, it really did make the the holiday fantastic for me. So... I had a great time. I can't wait to go back. Um, and and knowing that the sixth key, my novel, is in the Magic Castle library just is the icing on the cake. It's in the shelf next to Carter Beats the Devil and Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and the sixth key right next to each other. And that just makes me feel great. So 
If you ever get the chance, if you somehow manage to get an invitation to the Magic Castle, take it. Do not, do not pass it up, or you'll hate yourself. Because we haven't even scratched the surface and given away the secrets of the upstairs phone booth or what's hiding in the catacombs down below. You don't want to miss it. It's fantastic. And you might even see a celebrity because Neil Patrick Harris and Jason Alexander are always hanging out at the Magic Castle. Heck, the last time we went, we had dinner with Paul Williams' wife, Mariana. And I was like... Oh my God, you're married to Paul Williams. Paul Williams, the guy who wrote Rainbow Connection. The guy who wrote, Love, exciting and new. Come aboard. Come on, Rachel. We're, We're expecting, expecting you. The love boat. Soon we'll be making another round. But we had to leave. Sadly, we had to leave Aww. the Magic Castle. We had to get home. We had to get to bed yeah. because we had plans the next day, and that yes. was... Kamikaze! Kamikaze, Stan Lee, and Elvira herself's personal convention at the Los Angeles Convention Center. What were we going to say? It was Halloween. Yes. Halloween day. So we took the whole family. Josie went in her... her uh, what costume? Oh, she was a greaser? No. Yeah, she was a greaser. She was a greaser uh, from Greece. And um, you could trick or treat at the con. We've never done that before. There was candy at every single booth. Now we've done Easter at WonderCon, but and we some did tables give out candy. Right. We always do. We did Halloween at Kamikaze. But, oh my god, I got so sick. I ate on every single table, handing me a piece of candy. Oh, I know. I've never seen you eat so much chocolate. I couldn't say no. I felt rude. It was like here's a Kit Kat. It there's a Kit Kat. So another Kit Kat. It. A dark one, a regular one, a Kit Kat. <laughs> Two days in a row of Kit Kat everywhere. Give me a break. So, uh, Kamikaze, your thoughts before I um, give you mine? It was awesome. I had a good time. Now, I know you're going to say it was extremely crowded. Comic-Con level crowded. Yeah, it was way too crowded. I don't understand. We've been to Kamikaze every year for I don't even know how long, but this mm -hmm. was crazy. But I would still do it all over again. It just reached a point where... They, they put up a, a con of, of any size, and it just, it, it's mobbed. No, There's no. no saturation point. You could literally have one every week, and everybody would show up to spend their money. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about going to a Comic-Con event, and Kamikaze is a Comic-Con type event, on Halloween, is that the costumes, the cosplay is amped up because everybody's wearing a costume because it's Halloween. So, like, you saw so many um, uh, uh, Target Target Batmans and Walmart Supermans and all these store-bought costumes. It's really funny because at Comic-Con, you don't see a lot of that. I was unique. <coughs> what does that mean? My costume was not, like, a store-bought costume. I, I, I didn't recognize. What were you dressed as? As cosplay star and singer, Tracy Hines, I was cosplaying a cosplayer, a famous cosplayer. Oh boy, that's, that's awfully meta. Yeah. And why did you do that? Because I love her. And also? Because she was going to be there. Because she was there you signing. Know, no, can I take that back? Take I, it back. I did not do the research because we were so busy that week and with Magic Castle. I didn't do like we do for normal cons where the boys tell me who's there and what room and what panel and what signing. I went into this blind. I do know that, that Tracy does not do a lot of conventions, but she has always done kamikaze. She usually has a booth for her adorkable apparel, which is the cutest clothes ever. Check it out. Adorkable apparel. Um, and Tracy Hines, by the way, is um, known as being the hipster mermaid. She looks just like the little mermaid walked off the movie screen and put on a pair of nerd glasses. So that's what, that's what she's known for. Um, but I knew that she would most likely be there, but I had no idea the level that she has grown to. I did not know she was on the Hot Topic state, like, you know, had a meet and greet through Hot Topic and with a, you know, official line. I normally I just walk up to her table, but I was number one in her line, baby. The second I found out she was there with a the time and a spot, I started like stalking that area. And as soon as they would let me follow the wheel you spin, once Hot Topic took that away and it became the Tracy Hines line, I was first in line with my hipster mermaid, hot talk exclusive pop vinyl. So that was pretty cool. 
Now that's unusual because through a friend, Lindsay. Yes. We Who actually I love also we actually we cosplay Lindsay next convention. We know Tracy Hines a little yes. bit. Yeah, I've met her before. So she like goes li- to haunt. She's made videos for me. But like lining up that she was laughing. That's funny, she, she, right? She recognized me even in my red wig and my she's like, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she's and then she just talked normal talk, like, Oh, I just was at haunt for um Leanna's wedding and where were you? And like and all just normal stuff, but you know, I'm still a fan. Even when you meet some people, you still stay like, like Salvira. I, I met Cassandra so many times now, and I'm so privileged to say I know her in real life. But when I meet her, I'm still like jumping up and down inside like a little kid. Because she's Elvira. She's a legend. Sure. That will never go away. Is, is Tracy Hines a legend? In my book. <laughs> <laughs> In the Rachel Tucker book, she's pretty high on the legend. So list. you can you can check out Tracy Hines on Facebook or adore she YouTube. She is a big time YouTuber. She has a beautiful singing voice. She takes all the Disney videos, um, everything from Frozen to Little Mermaid, and she makes a video for them and sings the songs. And you would she's a Disney princess come to life, except for Halloween time. Then she's like zombie Little Mermaid, and she rocks that too. And what's interesting is that. Hot Topic had two signings that day. The line for Tracy was okay. Yeah. But the line for the next guest was around the block. The next guest was untouchable. It was told that you had to come back and wait like two hours to get the bracelet to get in the three hour line. Now, we're not talking about Rob Zombie or Alice Cooper. Or Stan Lee. Or, or anybody human. No. There was a two hour plus wait for a chance that you might I- get to get close to meeting Grumpy, Grumpy Cat. Cat. And Grumpy, wait, wait. <laughs> Grumpy Cat. I honestly think they held the lineup because every single star kept going over to get their picture with Grumpy Cat. Grumpy too. Cat. I saw everyone from Carrie Fisher to Stanley to Elvira go see Grumpy Cat. So it, Grumpy Cat was the hit of Kamikaze. I don't understand. I don't know. This we, is something that completely eludes it me. It broke our daughter's heart that we couldn't get in that line. We yeah, tried. but we she we got, saw her. She we got were, to see the we cat. We walked by the cat. We saw the cat. On this little pedestal and people taking pictures with it. But um, you would have had to spend half your day. And I already spent half my day in line for Tracy Hines. So I wasn't gonna now, say this is an animal that just happens to have a genetic defect. Yes. That makes it look like it's scowling. Yes. That's it. It is adorable. But it's, it's, it's a cat. Yes. I, I wouldn't wait 10 seconds to meet a cat. A lot of I can't even more. I can't even think of an animal that like I have an affinity for that I would go oh yeah it'd be cool. like I just they're not a one I have no concept that anybody would wait in line to well, to you look saw yeah, the line. they didn't let people touch the cat right yes yeah you could touch the cat I saw the little boy when I walked by was petting it <laughs> and if you were famous like a virus family got, you got to hold it Marilyn uh, even from um, Clerks Veronica who I love. Um, she held the cat in her photo. <laughs> like, I can't, I have no concept of what that is. You're not that animal. That's a girl thing, I think. It was mainly Yeah, no, I don't get it. The mine. grumpy cat. Kids and women of all kind flocked for grumpy cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you had the opportunity to meet, um, like, Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor... Or grumpy cat. You don't need to do that. Did you see that Thor walking pick? around? Yeah, there was a Kamikaze. shirt. There was a shirtless guy. It wasn't even that he was shirtless. The man was not real. I don't know what he was made of. I even stopped talk to him, and um, he was just unreal. That man was unreal. I know. I he, like I like to cosplay as Thor because that's what I look like. He was in a hurry to get somewhere, but he stopped and still took the picture for me. But he was very nice. Thor. Shout out to the Thor cosplay. Well, did you see anybody cosplaying that you were like, wow, that's a great costume? Thor. <laughs> that's the one. He just he was wearing pants. He was just very And he beautiful. grew his hair out. <laughs> Other than that? Mm. No? Well, there are so many good costumes. I saw a Batgirl that I thought was the best. Oh, see, same reason. Well, it was, a, you, it was a full you? costume, but it was rubber. Like, it was really cool looking. Mm. I like the Batgirl. Yeah, I'm sure you But did. there was a lot of other ones, like... Holy moly, it takes a lot of guts to wear that. Yeah. There were some girls there that the outfits were a little too small for them. You know, normally, hey, I'm a guy. That's a great thing. But some, it's like, no, you would look so much more flattering in a costume that actually I fit. Nothing. I'm a fat girl, and I rocked my mermaid leggings. <laughs> I rocked them. We, uh, we went over to uh, Elvira's booth to try to say hi, but 
Her and line was so massive. Bad that we couldn't get up there. Because he's like, come back, come back, come say yeah, hi. Her, li- her line was massive. Her handler. And I was like, we'll try, but... Um, but that's indicative of I the entire... stop her line. The entire us. event was massively crowded. Mm-hmm. But it was weird to think, like, people were waiting in line to meet Elvira and paying X amount of dollars for an autograph when you could have gone to yeah. Haunt that night for nearly I the same price. I did buy Elvira merchandise, even though I had just bought a bunch at Haunt. But the booth there was cheaper than what was at Haunt for some reason. There was a shirt that was... Um, yeah. A big price difference that I got that I was really excited about. What else did we do at Kamikaze? There was a lot of... Um, we hung out with um, the Flux Capacitors again. We saw the Flux Capacitors. We saw... Um, Ivo Trees? Yes. I know, I just murdered her name. Ner- Nerdtastic. Nerdtastic girl who was just on the show yes. and her boyfriend Mario was at were there. their booth. And Mario was there, but... Not technically, because he was across the aisle in line for a signing, I believe. Yeah, Todd McFarlane. Yeah, that's what it is. And then we saw Todd McFarlane. Yeah, he he walked right by us. us. Yeah. He did have a security guard, but I'm like, I looked up right as he was walking by. I'm like, hey, that's Todd McFarlane. Yeah, we 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 tend to be in the right place at the right time. We get lucky. We get really lucky. We, uh, uh, you know, Kamikaze was irritating this year in that they they chopped it up into two. I don't like the layout at all. I pray they don't do that again. And we have WonderCon just around the corner in the same place. If the layout for WonderCon is the same, I'm going to be really bummed. Yeah, so it, was, it wasn't very pleasant. It was so far apart, the two floors, that it felt like you were leaving and going to another convention. Like you were at two separate events. It was really crazy. Yeah, I didn't like it. They had it divided into the main room full of all the the exhibitors. Which was the crazy one. And then the smaller room full of the fan the clubs and, and the celebrities like Marilyn, Marilyn. and Christopher McDonald and um, James Hong. And all from the cars they got to see like. The, yeah, the Back to the Future yeah. car and they had the stones they and had the Shaguar from Austin Powers. Oh yeah, we had a great picture of Austin with it. It's so cool. You know who was there that was interesting? The gorgeous ladies of wrestling were there. Not they, so gorgeous. They had a table. They were selling stuff. One of them was in a, um electric scooter. We should say they were the retired No, I, I, I call them just the ladies of wrestling. Oh, okay. Because the gorgeous didn't really fit anymore. And I'll tell you, I could do a whole episode on being obsessed with the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I, oh my God. I watched that show so much. My favorites were Tina Ferrari and Hollywood and Vine. Isn't that no, great? They might have been there. I liked Hollywood no, and Vine too. No, they weren't there. I would have stopped. Oh. No, they had, and they didn't, they didn't have Babe the Farmer's Daughter. And they, <clears throat> It was interesting. And, and remember though, it was one of those things I was going to go back for. But by the end of the day, we were just simply exhausted. We visited with Jombie, like we always do. John Paragon. Who played Jombie. Who is awesome and always remembers you and our family. He played the breather and he also played Ramon Azteca from the Elvira show back him. in the day. He's always so nice. Like, where he's have a, you been? He's a great Good guy. To see you. Yeah, really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the celebrities there are, you know, just the nicest people. They just we happen saw Stan to be. Stan Lee on the stage is a little micro dot. Saw Stan Lee talking to Tom McFarlane, Rob Leefield. We saw Leanna Vamp. Yeah, uh, I might have gone back to buy one of, one of her posters, but we again we just were, we were exhausted. Yeah, uh, you were laughing because you're like you should because she was in front of her table sitting on sitting it. on her like poster. All her posters. I'm like, well, you should buy that one because then you can say that that was the one her ass was on for like 20 minutes. <laughs> she sat on that poster forever, and she didn't offer to sell us any posters. No, she's just like doing her own thing, chatting with somebody, yeah, which like, is fine. I mean, you got to network, but I had money to spend. Yeah, and Leanna Vamp out. didn't get my money. <laughs> it's okay. Really give my money to Tracy. I uh, I didn't buy anything at the convention. I bought a lot. I didn't buy anything. I bought my Tracy Hines pop vinyl. I got the Elvira shirt, which is like a spoof off of the 80s Susie t-shirt. Susie and the Banshees. Her most popular t-shirt in the 80s that everyone had of her face up close. Um, very recognized 80s icon t-shirt. Elvira did that on her t-shirt. Off of that, that's what the lady said, that she did it because of that t-shirt. And I had to have it. And then I got, uh, oh, the Flux Capacitors t-shirt, because I didn't have a t-shirt, and I figured we've been going to them in concert enough lately, I might as well get a t-shirt to wear to the next one. What you were funny. Have? You told the lead singer, I-, I don't have my DeLorean dress on. Because he always knows me. But I was also in the red wig. So I think yeah, I threw him off. I'm sure. Like, Remember me? DeLorean dress? <laughs> no red wig? <laughs> 
Uh, I was going to buy... Uh, Funko has a new line of toys called Vinyl Idols, and they make Doc and Marty, and there was a Marty McFly, but when I went back to get it, they'd already sold it. So there was really nothing to buy. And you know, the weird thing about Kamikaze, and the reason that I think it doesn't resonate with me as a, as a top-level con is that they don't discriminate when it comes to the vendors that are there. What I mean by that is there's a guy selling comics. There's a guy selling action figures. Then there's a guy selling shiatsu massage machines. There's a guy selling action figures. There's a guy selling vinyl kits of action figures. There's a guy selling you a trip to Las Vegas. Like there's a bunch of stuff there that belongs literally in a swap meet. There's a guy there selling cell phone accessories, not superhero accessories, but charging cords and plugins. You break yours while you're there. No, no, no. no. This is swap meet behavior. And swap meet flea market behavior belongs in those locations. You'd never see that at Comic Con. You'd never see that at WonderCon. They have a much more intricate and substantial way of weeding those people out and going, look, that's not what this is for. This is for the fans. Now, to their credit, they did, um, unlike, like we used to go to the LA Convention Center years ago for Wizard World, and Wizard World was poorly planned in that there's nothing to eat around the convention center. In the years since Wizard World, now that Kamikaze's taken over that sort of niche, uh, they have brought in the food trucks, which is great because if you want to get something to eat, you know, they do have the food trucks. The problem is that it's expensive. The and line. what did the line look like? They were an hour deep for each truck. They were seriously so long. And you're outside in the hot sun. It's not Yeah, covered. no, it wasn't fun. No Luckily, way. we planned ahead. We brought so sandwiches. And we um, went we had to, a nice little picnic lunch. Had a picnic lunch. In it was the parking lot. In the parking structure. It was nice. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was cheap. I fed the whole family for about $20. Mm -hmm. That would have bought... Chicken strips and a Coke. And I had more money to shop. Oh, I bought Bill Murray earrings. Goodbye. Yes. Rock it with my child. You bought. Shirt. You brought. You bought a Tracy Hines pop vinyl. Yeah. Um, what else did you buy? I think that's it. Josie bought alpaca plush. That's what she bought last WonderCon. She always buys the same at WonderCon. This is Kamikaze. Oh, Kamikaze. Yeah. What? No, that's, was that? Yeah. Yeah. No, she bought. Yeah, at Anime Expo. She bought some rabbit from yeah, some show. From that. Or on high host yeah, I don't know something. What that is. I don't know. But don't do the anime. we uh, closed it out by, we had to head on out uh, to beat the traffic to get home. We um, we uh, we had a Halloween at home. And I haven't had a Halloween at home again. Ever. Since, ever for Josie. Ever. I actually got to take Josie trick-or-treating through the neighborhood. Now, there weren't a lot of houses yeah. participating, which is irritating. One even had the audacity to put up a note saying, uh, sorry, no treats. And I was like, I'm going to egg your house, lady. <laughs> uh, but Josie got a little bit of candy, and I got to have fun like watching her trick-or-treat because, I, again, it's never, I've never had that uh, opportunity. So that was a lot of fun. Certainly living in Riverside, the opportunity to watch her trick or treat was not on the cards because of the way the drive was. Even going in late, it wasn't. I would never leave when it was dark. So that was a lot of fun. And then <coughs> Lauren Steve took her trick or treating yeah. in the neighborhood across the way. And we ended the night watching Elevator because our friend Mary is in Elevator. Yay. And that was a lot of fun. It was a good night. Uh, closed it out. The Halloween. Uh, uh, holiday was fantastic. Magic Castle, Kamikaze, Trick or Treating, you name it. It was a lot of fun. And we have a giant bowl of candy that we are now grazing through. And a hundred plus goodie bags that were never given out. Lack of children at my yeah. door. Well, hopefully you're going to try to take those to TPA. TPA's mixer on Sunday. I think it'll Sunday. ride there. <laughs> Hindle, Hindle said he would take you. On the back of my bike. <laughs> on the other show we just did. <laughs> so, Anyone else out there offering a ride to TPA... I'll give you a trick or treat bag. Tempting, I know. Oh, uh, it's great. <laughs> so let's let's uh, wrap it up, shall we? Let's do the wrap up. Okay. Uh, Magic Castle. If you can get the opportunity, you do must it. go. It's the most fun you will have. Take the time when you're there to see at least one or two shows, but also take time to just have a drink, relax, soak in the ambiance. It is unlike any place on earth. Uh, Kamikaze was fun. Try to weed out some of the swap meters and it will be a little better. 
don't split it in two. Make it one giant exhibition hall. And we were we were pushed aside at Comic Kazi for what? <coughs> Some holiday bazaar. Obesity crap. week. Oh yeah, that was there too. They were celebrating obesity week. I don't week. even know what that meant. Obesity is when you're really fat. Well, I know, but I mean, what were they doing? It was a convention it's on a, it? It's called Obesity Week. I, I'm assuming it's like doctors and people talking about how to prevent obesity. Oh. It, can't, it can't be a candy expo because that would be completely that inappropriate. <laughs> that wasn't going on. It was just set up because now it's going on now. Then there was the holiday boutique. There was women shopping yeah, yeah. downstairs. Down below, something. they called it the Cash and Carry Holiday That's Boutique. That's what it was. I should have Listen, that out. there weren't holiday... Yeah. Doesn't get to get used until Halloween is officially over. Wow. What happened to Turkey Day? Bring this, back the turkeys. Let's do a rant because this drive that that the mainstream marketing people have to sort of just force Christmas down your throat as early as possible is ridiculous. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. I collect turkeys and I'm very proud to say I have a pretty good amount of Thanksgiving decorations that I put out. But according to mass merchandising, they don't make enough money off Thanksgiving for it to matter. So screw Thanksgiving. Well, they could if they sold it's, it. I'd buy it. No, it's Christmas all the way. I go from store to store every year and find maybe one or two things to add to my collection. That's because they're too busy already the day after Halloween selling you Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. We were at the Disney store today. It's November 3rd, and they were already playing Christmas carols. Josie made a reindeer Build-A-Bear. There's no turkey Build-A-Bear. Christmas carols yeah. on November 3rd. It's not Christmas. Christmas yet. Well, I will keep the turkey hands alive. We will do our traditions of our Thanksgiving. And I will not put up Christmas until Thanksgiving is done and over. You just want to walk into a store and just start taking down all of their Christmas displays and going, look, I'm just helping you out because some idiot put these up earlier. Mm -hmm. Too early. Uh, sir, step away from those displays. I wouldn't mind if they had it out. If they at least gave us the option of selling the other two. Like, at least a few. There used to be turkey stuff. There used to be the yard blow up turkey and the. You know, well, they don't even do that anymore. Well, sometimes there's a little anywhere. tiny display of that. Micro tiny. But, but you know what happened is, over the last decade, they realized they weren't making any money off that merchandise, so they don't care about it. It's out. And. It's Christmas Charlie Brown and Rudolph and Frosty are in as quick as possible. Because there's only X number of shopping days till Christmas, they tell you. Seven Mondays. Who cares? And you're going to go do that nonsense Black Friday thing. Laura and I have done it every year for, I don't know, decades. I wouldn't feel like Thanksgiving if we didn't do it. I am proud to say... I'm done with Christmas shopping. I don't even need to go this year. I'm going sheerly out of the fact that I can't miss it. All year, it's like all my top three of favorite things to do. That's how much I enjoy this night out. It's an all night long binge. Like once Thanksgiving dinner is done, eight or nine o'clock at night, we are out and we do everything. We don't come home till the sun comes up and it's so much fun. I am happy and proud to say I have never gone shopping on Black Friday. It's a Yenta thing. You don't need to go. It's not my thing. It's chips. I have no concept of it. The first so time, much fun. the first time you ever went, you were pregnant with Austin, and you got into a fist fight over I got a, the TV. a television. <laughs> and I got it. And it wasn't even a flat screen television. It's before flat screen 90, televisions. What? Yeah. Ninety nine. Yeah. No, it wasn't a flat screen, which made it even heavier for a pregnant woman to fight over. Trust me. At Kmart of all yeah. places. <laughs> First off, I never been Black Sh Friday shopping, and second, I haven't stepped foot in a Kmart I since Clinton was in office. About four years ago was the last Black Friday craze that I was in over fighting and grabbing type thing. Um, Laura can vouch it was at a Walmart for like four dollar pajamas for kids pajamas with characters on them. People went insane. I've never seen nothing like that again. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I purely go now to the mall, which is something new they've just started doing two years ago. They open the mall now, um, Thanksgiving night late, and you shop all night. And it's just, it's a very relaxed Disney store. It's the only one that gets a little crazy. But there's specials and free gifts everywhere. And it's just, just to run around in your pajamas at 3 a.m. at the mall with your best friend is fun. Like, it's just fun. Well, I know I speak for everyone when I say we look forward to your Black Friday wrap-up yes. episode of 91 I will be Reasons. going if anyone wants to join me to Riverside, even though I moved back to Orange County, because that's where I've been the last six years. And it's the best mall 
And it just wouldn't feel like Black Friday without being at that mall. What do, what, what do you get out of Black Friday? You get free stuff. Free but, stuff. But, not, I mean, you've come home with, like, a Christmas ornament or something. Yeah, you'll get um, scratchers, buttons, um, samples galore, uh, and deals. Like, really good deals at the stores I care about. I'm not really shopping for other people as much as myself this Black Friday <laughs> because I'm done with everybody. Oh. So I'm planning on hitting like Yankee Candle Company, Bath and Body Works, like girly stores for really, really good deals. All right. Well, we'll again, we look forward to that wrap-up episode. So, uh, Build a bear. $10 Black Friday bear. you got to get that. I mean, how do you say no to that? You can't say no you to that. Say no to you that. can't say no to that. No. Are, is the food court open if food you're hungry? Food court is open. All night long, they're giving deals galore. We had Charlie subs at like 1 a.m. last year, and then we ended it with like breakfast at McDonald's that same day because we literally got to the mall around 8 p.m., and we didn't leave until morning. <clears throat> Sounds great. It was. It was really fun. <laughs> I, I can't even keep a straight face. I just, it's not my thing. It's not my scene. You've never done it. No, I would. I, I have no, I'm not, I'm not into commerce like that. It's really fun. I don't know how to describe it unless you've done it. No, it's, I, I'm not wired that way. And the mall is much different than like Walmart or Target or the store that's getting bombarded for people fighting for good prices. Yeah, I'm not wired that There's way. There's plenty of it there. In, in, so it's just relaxing and fun. In the same way, I'm not wired for like football games or stuff like it just doesn't interest yeah. me at all so anywho uh, we, we wish you luck and thank that you, you thank you we hope that you get all the candle bargains you yes. can get yes because that's candle important lotion. i need it all all right well me and we'll, my house smell smell really well that's great year. that's great well with two teenagers in the house we exactly. need all the help we can get exactly <laughs> we're we were we finished watching um inside out with the family today and inside out ends with um the characters inside riley's the head discovering a new button on the console that says puberty and they go what's that eh, you know how bad can it be and josie who is 10 turned to me and said what does that mean i said you'll find out in a couple years sweetheart <laughs> life imitating art <laughs> anywho so thanks for tuning in uh, I want to thank Rachel for sitting with me here. Yay. I am Jeff Tucker. I am The Voice. And the show you're listening to is... 91, 91 Reasons. listening to 91 reasons please subscribe and leave a review on itunes find us on facebook is anyone even still listening touch up my makeup again gonna do what a little laundry when i get back touch up my makeup again and then go back out again to get austin <sighs>